celebrate their songs and tell you what all happened throughout this week. Um, before we have a very special singers come up this morning, um, I want to just tell you what our VBS was about, first of all, so you're not confused. I know we had it up here last uh, week and as we were getting decorated, but this is Breaker Rock Beach. So imagine you're on the beach, you got your toes in the sand, um, and you're going to sit back and enjoy the service today. So uh, we always have a motto, we always have a weekly verse, um, and the kids know it by heart now. So our motto is over here, it says God's truth never changes, and our weekly verse comes from Romans 12 too. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Believe it or not, they all quoted it with me throughout the entire week. <laughs> so, um, when there's a lot of like different material out there for Bible school, and this year I was like tempted to not do Lifeway. We've done it several years, and Lifeway is great. Um, but I looked at other stuff. I was comparing prices, and what really grabbed me this year, uh, we always have like a daily point for each um, day. And I looked at those, and it was a little bit different this year. It wasn't just like this one little statement. It was, some people say this, but God says this. And it was like, God hit me, and he was like, man, this is what you need to do. And it was so cool because the start of um, this year in youth, we like gave them a challenge. Um, and we said, you know what, we're going to like fight this world and look at like what all they're saying and then we're going to go to God's truth and defend his word and it was just so clear to me that this is what this Bible school needed to be about and especially in this day and time like so that was kind of been the theme like this is what the world's going to say this is what some people might say but this is the truth this is what God is going to point us to and to keep going back to that so that was what um, kind of our theme centered around our stations would reiterate it and what was so cool this year, like, I definitely got to see, like, all the different stations, um, being the director, and I don't know, I wasn't as involved in the teaching part this year. Thank you, Miss Laura, for doing that for me in the mornings. So I got to see how music integrates the whole theme. I got to see games doing it. I got to see crafts, all of it. Um, and it was just really neat that, like, the entire Bible school was geared towards learning God's word. So... I'm going to let some very special singers come up this morning and show you some songs they learned this week. So, kiddos, if you want to come on up. Hold up just a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. Not all of you, just you. <clears throat> all right, so if you were in kindergarten, do you have Miss Jackie or Madison come up first, kindergartners? Or if you were in the daycare, kindergarten.
to having third through fifth graders. Hope. <laughs> you don't want to do it, Hope? Oh, All right, find your space back there. You don't have to if you don't want to.
more song. We're going to slow it down. Remember, it's slow and pretty.
church, no, we are not in a club, but we did get to spend a very long, long, long week together. <laughs> so if you were wearing a shirt or if you just didn't wear your shirt today and you helped out with Bible school in any way, one day, two days, all week long, sometimes twice a day, please give them up. <laughs> give them a round of applause. Way. 
um, and raise their kids up knowing Jesus, which is just the most important part. Amen. Um, so I counted up. I had to do offerings for morning and night. Um, and right now we have about $750 raised just alone from this week. And we are going to have one last offering call at the end. Um, uh, someone will stand at the back with the offering plate if you feel led to give. And um, we'll get that money to them. So they, they do know about it. Um, I have been blessed to serve on the board at the PRC. This is my second year. And uh, uh, Mr. Bradley Williams, they couldn't. They wanted to come this morning, but nobody was available to come speak to just thank you in person. But he did the next best thing he could do, and he sent a video. So, Madison, if you're ready to play that for me. Good morning, Big Lake Baptist Church. My name is Bradley Williams. I'm the executive director of the Pregnancy Resource Center of Stanley County. We are so grateful that you have supported us this week at your Vacation Bible School. I know it may feel like it's been a long week for some, and maybe a short week for the kids. But I pray that what they have experienced this week at Vacation Bible School, they might remember for a lifetime. I pray that these children's lives have been changed. We thank you on behalf of the board and staff and our clients for sponsoring us and raising funds that will go a long way in supporting those who are abortion vulnerable in our community.
really happy. Um, but no, and like clinging to what God says, and that truth comes from Him. And put my Bible somewhere. In my bag. Uh, so, and then there's always a bonus verse. Like we have, to, we have our weekly verse for the whole week. But the bonus verse came from Psalm 119, um, verse 116. It says, your word is truth. Your righteous judgments endure forever. And uh, during assembly, we also showed them this, this daily video that went along with what they were learning. And it was followed three children kind of on a treasure hunt. Um, and day one, uh, this the little boy in the video, he was lying about how well he did on a video game or something. And his friends were like, okay, no, real, how really what did you do, Jack? And kept um, going on about that. And he said, well, like, I lied because I just wanted to feel better about myself. And he goes, but it doesn't really matter. Truth is whatever I want it to be. And the, one of the friends was like, no, that's not it. Truth only comes from God. You can't just make up whatever you want and go with that. Um, which, like I said, like this the whole theme and what this was teaching this week to the kids, I was like, it's something they really need. Um, what they're hearing outside church doors, outside of what they're reading from the Bible, um, and how easy, just like that serpent trying to trick Adam and Eve, like, did God really say that? And just putting that doubt in their minds, especially when they're so young and trying to um, figure out their way. So day two, uh, this uh, feature was God's plan is best. And it followed the story that Daniel chose God's way. And it was funny, like each night I would try to review with the kids. And uh, I said, okay, what was our story about? And they said, Daniel in the lion's den. I said, right person, wrong part though. <laughs> um, so, and it, it actually, so it's from Daniel 1, and it's right after um, he's in Babylon. And him and some of his friends and other youths uh, that were considered very intelligent, very smart, were kind of gathered into the kingdom. And uh, they were told to eat his food. And Daniel was like, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, listen, like, I need to follow what God's plan is. I need to follow that. And so he asked for vegetables and water. And they said, no, you can't do that. He goes, well, let me, let me do a test, all right? He goes, let's see how well. Let us do that for a amount of time and then see how we pair against the ones who are eating the king's food. And sure enough, the kids said, Daniel's was better. He came out stronger um, because God's plan is best. So the points that day were some people say, do what makes you happy. And God says, my plan for you is even better. And as I was reading that story and thinking about um, what to say to the kids, I was thinking about my own life and like how, I mean, I have some pretty good plans, you know, like I like to plan things out. And I was like, man, you know, especially when I was going off to college, I was like, I'm going to a school where 80% of the population is from out of state. I'm probably going to move out of state. I'm going to go work in some big city, work in publishing and all that. And God's, I think God laughed at that because he said, joke's on you. Your future husband's 15 minutes down the road and you're coming back to work in the <laughs> town you lived in. And I love it and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, I was like, man, yeah, my plan, I mean, it was good. But this one that you had for me was even better. And the bonus verse is, oh. I, there's a lot of verses I love, but this one's probably one of my all-time favorites. It comes from Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, and it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and not on your own understanding. Um, just follow him, and he will make all your paths straight. Like That is still one of my favorites, um, and I just I really like day two. And as you, I think you guys heard, like day one, the songs, and it was, like, you, like I said, all the stations were integrated, and Day one was teaching about Adam and Eve's story, so if they're maybe not hearing everything in Bible story, they're getting into music, and then they're reviewing it in games, and Chrissy every day was reviewing it with them in crafts and uh, shipwreck. They, they had all these posters out there in, um, where they were getting games and snacks, so they were seeing this stuff over and over. So day three, day three through, and the rest of the week, we really start to focus more on the gospel. Um, and that everybody needs Jesus. And that was day three's main point. Everyone needs Jesus. And they got to hear the story about the rich young ruler coming from Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 27. Um, and 
the guy who had a lot of money that came up in Jesus and he goes, well, how do I get in heaven? I'm a good person. I do this, this, and this. And he was like, sell all your possessions and follow me. And the guy was like, Ooh. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that and walked away sad. So um, the point that day was some people say being a good person gets you into heaven. But God says everybody's sins and needs a savior. And we really talked with the kids that day of like, you know what, you can be a good person. There's nothing wrong with being a good person. But that is not going to save you. There is nothing that you can do that will get you into the kingdom of God. Um, because you have to realize that you're broken. <laughs> that everybody sins and that we need Jesus. Um, like there's, there's nothing that we can do. And the verse for that day was Romans 3, 23 through 24. And I can't read that far, so... <laughs> For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is Christ Jesus. Um, and what was so cool is like several of the kids already knew the verse when we went over. I said, everyone needs Jesus, Romans 3. And they said, because we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Which is really, it's just really cool that, because um, like I said, like some of the kids you see, some of them go to church. Uh, like I said, I, we had about like 80s kids that we saw this week, and you only saw a few up here today to sing. Because some were saying, oh, Miss Rabian, I can't go on Sunday because my dad is serving in my church. And I said, that's okay. <laughs> that's totally fine. Um, like, I'm just glad you're going to church. And I think we had a couple kids and missed Sunday and Wednesday night. Like, oh, we were like, oh, where are you? Where are you? And they said, oh, we, had to, we were at Bible study at our church. And I said, as long as you're in church, that's great. Um, that's the most important thing. And then there's some kids who have never set foot in a church, especially in the mornings. Um, they would, We would ask them and said, oh, like, do you go to church? And they said, no, this is the first time ever, and this is awesome. So um, it's just like you just never know who's going to walk through your doors um, and who's struggling and who just who might have some tough times at home and just they really need it this week. Um, so that was day three. Day four uh, is this poster over here. The first one, it says, Jesus is the only way. Um, and the story title was like that John wrote about Jesus. And it comes from John 14, one, verses 1 through 6, and then jumps to uh, chapters 18 through 20, and then Acts 1, 9 through 12. But it's talking about Jesus is the way. He is the only way to get to heaven. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through him. And they learn about, um, I think this is the night, correct me if I'm wrong, Bobby, that you took them out to the cross. You take them out to the three crosses out there. And they got to, like, visibly see, like, this is what Jesus was hung on. This is what he did for you and me. Um, and because kids are so visual and they like the hands-on experience. Like, they like to see that stuff and trying to imagine it, um, especially if they can't read yet. So we have some cool kids that are, that are too young, maybe they can't read so they definitely need those pictures and visualizations to understand what we're trying to teach them. So this for, or the points that day were says, some people say there are many ways to get to heaven, but God says there is only way, and it's through me. Um, and the verse for that was Acts 4.12. There is no other name under heaven given to people by which we must be saved. Um, Jesus is the only way. And like I said, like these kids, they knew it. They knew the points. I said, okay, well, what did you learn? And like, I mean, I've been doing this for several years, and I feel like this, and I could be wrong because it's just fresh on my brain, but I just feel like, I said, what did you learn yesterday? And they'd be like, truth comes from God, or God's plan is best. Um, and there was one little boy, we do pledges every morning in assembly, and he goes, can we do the Bible one first? That's my favorite. <laughs> I said, we'll do it last because we say, um, but every morning he asks me that. He goes, can we do the Bible one first? Um, but they knew all this stuff. Like, I, there wasn't a whole lot of prompting I had to do. They they were really soaking it up this year. Um, and it's just, I would just go home and I would just be like, man. Because <laughs> sometimes I feel like, oh, did I cover what I needed to cover? Did I go everywhere I needed to go? And um, since I am, like, running around, I don't necessarily get to be with the kids for as long as the group leaders or the station leaders get to be and um, see what all they're saying and learning and chatting about. But, uh, like, and then I would hear stories from other people and be like, no, they are getting it. They are um, getting it. They are, there are seeds that are being planted. So day five, uh, the point for this day was speak the truth.
truth and love. And I believe this one was maybe a little bit harder to teach because it was like, Paul encourages the Ephesians. Well, some of them didn't know what the word encouragement meant. So we had to go over that in the mornings and at night. Um, and it, several verses for this. It was Acts 9, 1 through 6, chapter 19, 1 through 12, 21 through 31, chapter 20, verse 1, and then Ephesians uh, chapter 3, verses 14 through 4, uh, or chapter 4, verse 16. So it was a whole lot in trying to explain what a riot <laughs> meant to them um, about Paul trying to, but the basis was like speaking the truth in love. Like, And I think we already heard that song that was day five that we opened up with, right? That God's love speaking um, about him. And the point for that day was some people say, if you don't agree with me, you don't love me. Who have I heard that out in society or on Facebook? <laughs> a lot of stuff on social media. About like, oh, if you don't agree with me, like I'm just going to delete you. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> but if you don't agree with me, you don't love me. Like you don't support what I'm doing or what I'm saying. And I'll be like, listen, truth comes from God. Like if it's not in here, then yeah, no, I cannot support what you're saying or doing. But it doesn't mean I don't love you. Um, and I talked to them about like screaming at somebody or getting an argument about that may not be the best way. For some people, some people like being yelled at. I don't know. I'm not one of those people you yell at me, I'm probably going to cry. Um, but if you don't agree with me, you don't love me. But God says speak the truth in love. Speak in loving. And it's not necessarily wrong to say, hey, like, that's not necessarily the best plan for you to do this. It's, it might feel good right now, um, but one day you're going to wake up and you're going to feel like something's missing. Um, and it's not wrong to say that to people. <laughs> Especially if you're trying to save them from a bunch of heartache and definitely a future um, and an afterlife where they are not in heaven with Jesus. Um, and trying to teach that to the kids. And the extra verse for that um, day was Ephesians 4.15. Rather, speaking the truth in love, um, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. Um, the best way to live your life is through Jesus, and I've been, I, I mean, some people ask me, like, well, what's your testimony, what's this, and I'm like, well, I was saved at seven years old, and it was the best decision ever, um, but I can't tell you that my life has been easy since that point, um, but I, I also heard this question that somebody had posed one day, and it said, well, where would you be if you didn't have Jesus, and I'd be like, probably not here, um, I don't know where I would be, and I really didn't want to find out. Um, I'm just very thankful that I grew up in a church, that I had parents that took me to church. Um, that I, like, there hasn't been much, there was a very small time in my life until I understood who God was, who Jesus was. And some of those kids that come through VBS, they don't have that. They don't have a stable home life. They don't have parents who bring them um, to church or teach them at home about who Jesus is, and I'm just very thankful because I don't know where I would be, and so that's why VBS is so vital and so important, and yes, one week out of the year, um, but it can be a stepping stone to lead somebody to be in church, to grow up, and because, like, this life is messy enough on its own, and if you're not around other believers, and um, surrounded by people who love Jesus, and teaching you, and being there to pick you up when life gets tough, like I said, we all need encouragement sometimes, and the kids are like, yeah, like you just need to, sometimes you just need to um, be told it's okay and that you're doing great. And I said, sometimes you do need that. Best place to get that is church, especially here at Big Lake. Uh, um, Bobby, Laura, do y'all have anything to add? Did I miss anything with those stories? Because I was a little nervous about that part, to be honest, since I didn't actually teach it this year. Um, I also, I did want to show, uh, we always show the gospel video presentation with the kids. Um, we started on day three, we go through day five, and some of them are like, oh yeah, I know this, the ABCs, and then they have a song that goes with it. I think we're going to close um, with that song so you guys get to hear it as well. So like I said, like every song, every station, like it, they're getting it at every every stop. So, and, and I told them one day after the video played, I said, I know it sounds real simple, the ABCs. But you know what? Jesus is the only way into heaven. He's all you need to, um, and all you just believing in him and that he's your savior uh, and that you live your life that way. That, that is, it is that simple sometimes. Um, 
So Matthew, so go ahead and play that gospel video for me. Hey guys, I'm Chuck, and I want you to know that God loves you and that he has an amazing plan for you. God knows your deepest thoughts and feelings. He wants to have a relationship with you. Now, the Bible has a lot to say about God's plan and how you can have a relationship with him by trusting in Jesus. So I'm here to tell you the gospel, the good news about Jesus, and explain how you can become a Christian. The first thing you need to know is that God rules. The Bible tells us that God created everything, including you and me. God is in charge of everything. There is nothing that's outside of his control. The next thing you need to know is that we have sinned. Every single one of us since the beginning of time, since Adam and Eve, every person who has ever lived has chosen to disobey God. The Bible calls that sin. That because God is holy, sin can't be around him. Our sin separates us from God, and the Bible says it deserves God's punishment of death. Guys, that's bad news. But wait, the Bible also has some really incredibly good news. See, God provided a solution to our sin problem. God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to rescue us from the punishment of our sin. Now, that's something that we as sinners could never, ever earn or do on our own. Jesus alone saves us from sin. Another thing you need to know is that Jesus gives. Jesus lived a perfect life. He never sinned, and he died on the cross for our sins. He rose from the grave, and he's still alive today. Now, because Jesus gave up his life for us, We can be welcomed into God's family now and forever. Guys, that's the best gift ever. So, how can we respond to this good news? Well, we can receive the gift of salvation that Jesus offers us. Now, the Bible tells us exactly how to do that. We use the letters A, B, and C to help us remember how God wants us to respond to his good news. A, B, C stands for admit... Believe and confess. First, admit to God that you're a sinner. The Bible says that we're all sinners and that we need to repent. To repent means to turn around, to change direction, to turn away from your sin and turn towards God. Tell God that you're sorry for your sins and trust him to forgive you. Second, believe. Believe that Jesus Christ is God's son and receive his gift of forgiveness from sin. And third, confess. Confess your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. That means that you tell God and other people that you are trusting in Jesus to be your Savior and to be in charge of your life. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus is God's son and confess that he is your Savior and Lord. Now, the ABCs can help you remember how to become a Christian, but trusting in Jesus is something that's a really big deal, and that's really personal between you and God. So if you want to know more about what it means to follow Jesus, talk to your mom or your dad or a grandparent or a teacher or a leader or a pastor. I know that any of them would love to help you understand more about what it means to receive God's gift of forgiveness from sin.
But sitting in the pews, the kids had to wait till the parents came. And watching those kids eagerly await their parents come through the door uh, just reminded me of something on how it's just a, a mind picture of how we need to run to God as our Heavenly Father. And it comes from Matthew 18. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to him and said, him in the midst of them and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, who humbles himself as a little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives a little child like this in my name receives me. All y'all receive those children like that this week. And I applaud you.
So we're going to play this it's song. On the screen again. It's our Advent song. Maybe you're here and you are lost today. Maybe you need to come. This altar is open. God's arms are open. and waiting on you.